Uh oh. Do you have clutter, piles, or chaos in your places and spaces like this that instantly cause your head to spin? What is this even? Oh my gosh. Do you feel bewildered and helpless because you don't have a clue where to start due to overwhelm? Oh, what's this? Oh, mm-hmm. Looks like a little monkey shenanigans going on in here. What the hey are you two doing? Oh, uh-huh. Baby makes three. Now. What have you guys got to say for yourselves, huh? What? Have you ever felt paralyzed to take action or felt worn out before you even get started when you face a mountain like the ones I'm facing in my art studio? I know I'm not alone experiencing these emotions. How do I know this? Because I'm exposing my own frustrations. If you recognize these traits in yourself, it's probably because we have the same personality types. And it doesn't mean that we're failures or bad housekeepers or lazy or don't care. Our brains are wired this way and a lot of that stuff simply ain't our fault. So unfurl that knitted brow because every little thing is going to be all right and I've got a secret weapon to light our paths forward. On this week's vlog, I'm going to shine a light on a secret method that will lead you straight to the promised land of organized bliss. And I found it inside a great big jar just like this one. Ahoy, mateys! Let's go on an adventure! Now what's so special about an empty jar? Well, grab my hand, creative adventurers, and I will show you. Let's open up this jar and let my secret out. Plus, we're going to dive in a bit deeper to discuss our personality traits, how they affect our organization process and progress, creating and implementing goals or plans, and plus the way we approach designing our homes or offices or creative spaces. Let's get started. Woo! Let's do this thing. <laughs> Hello friends, visitors, and armchair travelers. My name is Lily Diane. I'm a color junkie, a flinger of paint, and a self-professed upcycling diva. I'm living and loving my postcard life in the southwest corner of Colorado. My goal in life has been to have fun. Fact, having fun is my superpower. And today I'm going to share with you a couple of slick tricks that I use to, shall we say, jumpstart my brain to get started, stay motivated, and be victorious, turning jobs or tasks that are not my idea of fun into actually admitting, hey, that was kind of fun. Now, I'd say that's a magic making right there. If you can trick this brain into doing a task that isn't fun and just thinking, holy moly, let's do that again. You see this big old empty jar? It may look like a jar to you, but to me, it's my life raft. It's my way shower and it is my biggest cheerleader. Here's the backstory of what caused me to put this glass vessel up on a pedestal. My son is almost exactly the same personality type as I am. Now, if you have a child who is your spitting image in the personality arena, then you also know it's both amazing having someone who can complete your sentences and shares your passions. And at the same time, it makes you want to pull your hair out because they are mirror images of your strengths and your weaknesses. It's like seeing a hologram of your younger self and realizing that all those things you did as a kid, mm -hmm, they're coming back to haunt you. And it's not because your mama wished you had 10 kids just like yourself. No, it's simply because you share the same personality traits. Whew. I can see an entire stadium of heads bobbing yes up and down as I just said that you know who you are 
I'd tell my son to go clean his room and an hour later I'd go back to check on him and he'd be playing Legos or reading a Ranger Rick magazine. I'd pop back in and remind him, stay on track, then I'd come back in a little while later to the exact same scenario. By the end of the day, we were both exhausted and his room looked the exact same way. One day when we were in a headlock over his room's appearance, I looked at him and I saw myself when I was his age. He looked up at me from the middle of the piles of toys and clothes in his room. His big blue eyes were filling up with tears and he said, Mama, I don't even know where to start. That's exactly when I made the choice to cross that line drawn in the sand to meet him heart to heart. It was overwhelming in every direction. And truthfully, I knew just how he felt. It was truly difficult to know, where do we start? I am grateful for the training I received from Florence Littauer and her daughter Marita about personalities. He wasn't being defiant. He was being himself, a sanguine, phlegmatic. Being able to see myself in him helped me not to take his inaction personally. So that's why I made the choice to get right down on his level so I could see everything from his pint-sized angle. That's when I noticed all of his ball caps. My boy. <laughs> he had a bazillion ball caps due to being fair skinned and we lived in Southern California. So I said, hey, how about just doing one thing to start? Like collecting all your ball caps and then put them in one of your cubbies in the closet. He looked around his room and I could see him zooming in on all of the hats. The next thing I noticed was a slight glimmer of interest in his eyes and expression and he jumped right up and began scooping up the ball caps. His eyes actually twinkled when he finished. So I said, what about all your matchbox cars? Could you just grab all of those and put them away? His body language had definitely changed. His countenance perked up and to my amazement, he jumped up with even more excitement to play the game. We continued on with his Legos, puzzles, magazines, crayons, and all the other things in his room. Work became play that day, and my friends, this is what totally motivates a sanguine. Having fun, playing, laughing, and turning chores into play. If you watch my video, Meet the Artist, you will see that the apple fell from the same tree as my entire quest in life has been to have fun, and if my jobs weren't fun, I'd always find ways to make them fun. As time went on, that game became a little boring, so we switched it up and added another game called Beat the Clock. In the Beat the Clock game, you set a timer for 20 minutes and then you buzzed a move until the timer buzzes. I still play this game as an adult to get myself motivated and moving on tasks that I'm not especially fond of. And it's kind of mind blowing how much you can accomplish in 20 minutes when you focus. Making a noticeable dent becomes fun and it makes it really easy to do another 20 minute burst and then another. And before you know it, you've completed that thing that you dreaded doing. You walk away feeling successful because happy endorphins are flooding your brain and causing your little spirit to float. Bush, bush, happy little bush, 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 happy little bush, happy little bush. <laughs> After the auto accident in 2008 and PTSD kicked in, I experienced major bouts of feeling overwhelmed, even with simple tasks. My body ached, my brain was fuzzy, I ran out of steam and concentration quickly. Plus, with the autoimmune challenges I faced daily, I ran out of gas really fast. I only had so many spoons to spend. And if you're not familiar with the spoon theory, I put a link in the description box explaining what that is. In a nutshell, one spoon represents an exchange of energy. And with autoimmune diseases, you have a limited number of spoons each day to spend. Simple tasks such as sitting up for a few hours or washing the dishes or peeling an apple can quickly use up your spoons in your account. I learned how to save my spoons and when and what to spend them on. Doing something like taking a shower would cost me all of my daily spoons when I was experiencing a flare-up. In fact, many times just 
thinking about taking a shower would wear me out because I knew what it would cost me. It was common for me to need a day or two to rest after taking a shower. I'm not exaggerating one tiny bit, and many of you out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Deep bows and gentle hugs to you. In 2014, we decided to sell our home in Ohio and move to Colorado, my birthplace, due to the health challenges living in a humid area with lots of molds and lack of sunshine contributed to my health crisis. I was recovering from pneumonia shortly before it became time to begin packing up the house. My energy levels were at an all-time low. I remember clearly the day I stood in the middle of our 2,400 square foot home and said to myself, I don't even know where to start. I'm so overwhelmed. Then I remembered that day, 25 years earlier, that I stood beside my son in the middle of his overwhelm and chaos in his bedroom. I remembered the game I suggested to him, and then I was like, I'll just customize this for myself. I began writing tasks down in bite-sized pieces on paper. I cut them up and then folded them and dropped them into a jar. Each morning and each afternoon, I told myself that I only needed to do one task. That's it, that's all, only one. So I draw one slip of paper out of the jar and I made an agreement with myself that I could exchange a task that I didn't wanna do with another one, but I could only do it one time per session. Before I knew it, the entire house was prepped and ready for our big move. What amazed me is that all these years later, I had the exact same reaction that my son had that day. I got my skippy and my yippy back. Woo! Boy, howdy. You see, when the tasks were broken down into smaller pieces, I didn't experience the paralysis I did looking at the entire mountain of tasks it invigorated me, it inspired me, and most days I would draw another task or three out of the jar and finish those tasks with ease and leftover motivation. Whoa! And here's another game we played to finish a huge task that my Superman faced. Besides being a superhero, my Superman is a web host. He faced the daunting task of moving hundreds of clients from the servers that were in our basement out into the virtual cloud. Until each account was successfully transferred, we couldn't put our house on the market. It was nearly a year long process. Well, my excitable sanguine child heart sank at the thought of not being able to pick up and move right now. <sighs> That's when I decided to create a game to keep both of us motivated and moving forward. I counted out enough beans to match the exact number of clients he needed to move and I put them in one jar. And then each time my Superman transferred a client, I'd take a bean out of one jar and put it into the other jar. And it represented a complete transfer. Well, at first it looked impossible because, you know, one lonely little bean in a jar looks kind of pathetic, don't it? Hmm? Then slowly but steadily, the jar of beans representing the accounts that needed to be moved became smaller than the jar holding the finished accounts. When it got down to the final few beans, I started making popcorn and cheering like a sports fan because it meant we could officially put our home on the market. Woo! How many of you have to-do lists longer than a football field? Could a jar of beans or making slips of papers with tasks written on them be your way out of chaos? Yes, it certainly can, and it does work. Here's my new jar filled with tasks that will help me kind of clean up all that clutter I showed you. You see, I'm experiencing a log jam. Until I can finish organizing Studio A, that means I can't move forward to finish Studio B until that's completed. I've learned and I'm still learning how to work with my personality quirks and how to utilize both of my temperament's strengths so they can work with each other and not against each other. And once you know what your personality type is, you will be able to discover the exact motivation needed to find your groove to accomplish any task. If you haven't taken Florence's personality test, I encourage you to do so. I put the link in the description box. And here's an overview of each personality type and how it applies to our DIY or creative sides.
A melancholy temperament spends a lot of time in their heads, carefully researching and analyzing details, often making lists in teensy tiny handwriting before making any decisions. They will make graphs and charts with layouts of furniture to scale, and they're going to know exactly what type of chair they need to fill a certain space. If you've watched the TV show Monk, you will have a better understanding of the detailed mind of a melancholy temperament. The phlegmatic personality can truly go with the flow. Partner with a phlegmatic, like I have, if you want an easygoing teammate who will let you take the reins on whatever style, colors, or decor preferences you have. Peace reigns supreme to a mild-mannered phlegmatic. They will happily jump in to help, run to the store 50 million jillion times to pick up items that, if you're a sanguine, you probably forgot to get. Every team needs an easygoing phlegmatic on the DIY project. The powerful choleric personality has a built-in need to have control of any situation. They are task-oriented, organized, and often love a challenge, such as a remodel or building a new home from the ground up. They are self-starters and often prefer working by themselves or directing others on the job. If you want a DIY job done, give it to a choleric. Which reminds me of a story. My son's father was a choleric melancholy and he detested clutter of any kind, including kitchen gadgets. Well, I loved creating colorful vignettes throughout our home, including on our kitchen counter and our cabinet tops. And he wanted clear countertops. And I wanted a lot of pretty things to look at. We drove each other crazy. We would go to a hardware store together to pick out paint while he stood in front of the neutral shades, which means beige, pondering their minuscule differences. I was busy gathering armloads of vividly colored paint chips. You know what? We'd always return home with paint chips and never the paint, not once. His melancholy side would never be able to decide between the 17 shades of off-white he picked out, so therefore, nothing, nothing got painted. So I'd try to tell him, it's just paint. We can always change it if we don't like it. Nope, 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 nope. I gotta think about it. <sighs> Thinking about things is just really hard on a sanguine when you've got a plan and, and a bunch of colorful paint chips in your hands. So one day, after repeating this same process again and coming home with only paint chips and no paint, my bold, sassy sanguine teamed up with my confident, get her done choleric personality and together we took the ball into our own hands. The next day I brought home the brightest shade of Pepto-Bismol pink paint that I could find and painted our entire bedroom with it. Okay, I, I admit that I may have had a little, just a little, just a little, little tiny bit of PMS, maybe, but I don't even really want to blame it on PMS because I was genuinely frustrated at not being able to make a change in our decor by flinging some paint around. Hmm. Looking back, I can clearly see now how I could have compromised better and picked my battles more carefully, hence our divorce after nearly 20 plus years of marriage. Understanding our personalities is key, whether it's getting married, working with others, or raising children. Better clarity on your own personality will help you see yourself clearer and those around you. Remember to look for your individual superpowers that your personality needs to thrive and survive in life and living. For a sanguine, make it fun. For the melancholy, hmm, make it orderly. For the cleric, give them choices. And for the phlegmatic, make it peaceful. Work with each other and not against each other. As my friend Anne says, teamwork doesn't seem work. 
Next week, I'll show you the progress I've made using the jar as my assistant to gain control of Studio A. And we're going to begin our first DIY project together. I'll be demonstrating how to stencil color over color and how to keep those colors vibrant on one of the cabinets in my kitchen. This is a project I've been itching to get out for a while now. And I've got a quick update about the Friday evening live stream. It's been postponed temporarily due to some connectivity challenges that we have living in a rural area. I am working on solutions, so keep your fingers crossed and I will keep you posted. And I would love to hear what you've discovered about yourself taking the personality test and what projects you're going to try using the jar game or the magic bean game. Please share in the comments so we can cheer you on or be inspired by you. Wait a minute, what's that Pam? Oh, it's my built-in sanguine clock sending an alarm that it's time to play now. So let's go outside and make a snow angel. I am not kidding you, that's what's on the agenda. Do you know that I have not made a snow angel since 1998? Let's say I'm overdue, how about you? So go out and do something fun today. And if you're not a sanguine, go out and do something fun anyway. And I'll see you next week. <laughs> Holy crap, that's deep. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Ready or not, here I go. Feels good though. Yeah. <laughs>